We have recently started a review of the Gospel of John. This will be our third installment. We'll be looking at verses 6 through 8. As it's important to learn to learn from the text of Scripture, you're pick, you're being exposed to divine manners. The Son of God did not just begin his ministry in the dark, so to speak, without it being known. He prepared he prepared men for the ministry of Christ. Even apart from his first time he spoke in his hometown synagogue, you know, he, he stood up and found and read Isaiah 61. Mm -hmm. There had been a lot of preparatory work before he read that. See, it's God's manner to introduce what he's going to do. Uh, not everybody sees it, I understand that, but... They could if they would have their eyes open. Prior to Jesus going about doing good and healing all that were oppressed to the devil, there wasn't a whole lot said about what Jesus was going to do. I don't know if you ever thought about this, but you could about stick it on one page. There just, there just wasn't a lot said about what he was actually going to do. Talked about him reigning the kingdom beyond his shoulder, and he'd have the key of David. But it's all kind of general, you know. It didn't. There wasn't enough to really recognize him unless you really had some insight. Yeah. Told where he was going to be born, born of a virgin. But as far as his actual ministry was concerned, there wasn't a a whole lot said about it. The people, it appears, had the general idea that he was going to restore the kingdom to Israel, kind of in the grandeur experience to the days of Sol David and Solomon. It was kind of, it wasn't because they were necessarily stupid people, it was that there wasn't a whole lot, <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot said. Yeah. Why not? Well, it's God's manner that he doesn't say about a lot about what he's going to do until he commences to do it. This, this is how God is. So everything's kind of vague and hazy until it, time comes. Then he begins to open it, open it up. Now, I remember when we, first, when we first kind of began to see that. And so when all of a sudden there's a lot of understanding begins to be manifested, it's because there's, a lot, there's something about to happen. It's not because people got smart all of a sudden. Yeah, right. Or they studied and studied and finally got through. That's, it's because something's on the verge of happening. Some of the people in Jesus' day sensed this and said there was great expectation among the people. They kind of, they didn't know what was going to happen, but they kind of sensed we're on the verge of something here. Well, we're on the verge of something. Amen. The whole face of Christianity has changed yeah. almost totally. It's absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. For the first time, I heard a person who was knowledgeable of this give a, what they call a lecture on it. Well, they're right on the target. Mm -hmm. That throughout history, there have been fundamental changes every 500 years. Mm -hmm. go, you go way back to Abraham. Every 500 years, there was some kind of major upheaval and change. That's happened in our age. Something has changed. Yeah, right. Christianity bears little resemblance to what it was 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Theology has changed. Concept of praise has changed. Interpretation of the Bible has changed. Everything has changed, which means something's, yeah. something's happening. There's a shaking going on. Amen. That happened when Jesus came the first time. That was what had happened. It had been, it'd been from Dullsville from, for 500 years. It had been like Dullsville. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't any prophet. Mm -hmm. We don't know if there was a priest or not. It just was nothing was happening. But all of a sudden, mm -hmm. 
before Jesus comes, things begin to pick up and yeah, things begin to happen. That's what we're going to touch on tonight. The Son of God, at the time of our text, the Son of God had been in the world for three decades. Thirty years. And he'd gone completely undetected. Even, even Mary and Joseph weren't quite sure. When Simeon told, told them what was going to happen, Mary pondered these things in her heart. Mm -hmm. When the shepherds told Mary and Joseph what the angels told them, they kind of, talked, kind of took them by surprise. They pondered it. When Jesus told Mary, I must be about my father's business, she pondered. See, nobody really knew mm -hmm. the extent of this man that now 30 years old. Yeah. Nobody really under his brothers didn't believe in him. Oh, yeah. One time when he was preaching, his mother and brothers thought he'd flipped out. They went to <laughs> they went to call him out of the house, you yeah. remember. Mm -hmm. They just didn't know who he was. Now the Son of God has been, as I say, thirty years he's been in the world. At the dedication of Jesus, and I wanted to make a little correction here. Jesus was not eight days old when he was dedicated. He was circumcised when he was eight days old, and after Mary's purification, which involved eight the eight days before when before he was circumcised, and thirty three days after. That's when he was dedicated, which is 40 days after he was born. Just a thing of interest. So now Jesus has grown up, and he's about to enter his ministry. How's God going to handle this? Will he cause the people to be discontent with Rome? Like, is that how? It, that, is that what's going to? Well, there's people now that think this is what he do. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, say, we're sick and tired of living under the Roman Empire. We want our own king. I hadn't had one for a long time. Is that how he's going to prepare the people? Well, all of a sudden, they begin to think of the Messiah as correcting their domestic or social problems. Is that how he's, is that how he'll prepare, prepare them? Throughout his prodigious ministry, very few, if any, saw Jesus as the deliverer from sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody really, they really saw this. But commencing with our text, this became a predominant thing. Salvation from sin. Now the angel did tell Joseph, he shall save his people from their sin. But see, this is the, kind of, the idea kind of kind of went away with time. Now it's going to surface. Yeah. This is a king, all right. But his deliverance from sin, that's what humanity needs. All this other stuff is just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. So John the Baptist is going to come into the picture. Our text is John 1, 6 through 8. <coughs> There was a man, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Hmm. I know that some people tell us that John's writing is simple, but that's, they just say that because they're simple. He doesn't use a lot of complicated words, I understand, but I tell you, he'll give you some, something to think about, deep thoughts, yes, amen. profound thoughts. The reason for 
his linguistic simplicity was God making it a little easier for us to grasp the profundity of what yeah. what he said there was a ma there was a man <laughs> See, now, up to this time, ordinarily, when people got in trouble, God had sent an angel. And you can follow this all through, all through Scripture now. One time Israel cried out, When we cried unto the Lord, he heard our voice and sent an angel and hath brought us forth out of Egypt. Because some people don't know that. Some, some Christians don't know that. That an angel brought him out of Egypt. That's right. Moses was the scene leader, but an angel. Yeah. And they also don't know that God said he himself would not go up with them. Uh -huh. yeah. They have built that calf, and God says, That's it. Yeah. I'm not going to be with you anymore. Uh -huh. But I'll send my angel. I'll send. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that'll shake some people up right there. Yeah. And when he gave the law, it was angels that gave it. Uh -huh. The law was given by the disposition of angels and ordained in the hands of a mediator. That's Moses. See, God is, he's like aloof yeah. Yeah. from the people. But commencing with Jesus, he's going yes. to yeah. come close. Yeah. Yeah. He told them not to offend the angels. Don't offend either. the angels because he says <laughs> he won't be merciful yeah. to you. Angels, they're not like kind. Yeah. Angels don't say, oh, I understand. Yeah. You just were weak, that's all. Oh, no, this isn't how the angels respond. Yeah. They don't have mercy and grace. Uh -huh. So God said, don't, don't agitate that angel. Yeah. You suppose some churches have agitated the angels? Uh -huh. I've thought about this. When Israel was threatened with Assyria... God, quote, sent an angel which cut off all the mighty men of valor and the leaders and the captains in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame of face to his own lands. He sent an angel. Yeah. Wiped out the head of the military. So why not pray this for the those that are waging a religious war? He've... We had this in the Second World War, religious war. Japan fought in the name of religion. We had this before. But in those days, people kind of knew this is a religious thing. Today, we've got a war of gods. We've got other nations calling Christians unbelievers. <laughs> and the church is as dead as a stump. They don't see what kind of thing is happening. They don't see it. God's being challenged. And I think God's looking to see if there's 50 righteous. Amen. And what I'm pointing out here is that in time past, he'd send an angel. The days of Hezekiah, when they were oppressed by the Assyrians, the angel of the Lord went forth and smote the camp of Assyrians, 185,000 one night, an angel. But when it came to the matter of the Messiah, he did send angels to announce the birth. Sent Gabriel to tell Mary and Joseph, and sent a band of angels to tell the shepherds, but it was kind of private. It wasn't a public announcement. There was a man. No ordinary man. This was no ordinary man. It was a man. He'd be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. Yeah. How about that? Something to ponder. Yeah. Oh, ye Pentecostals. <laughs> Anything like that ever happened in a charismatic church? Yeah. Huh? Has it? Filled with the Holy Spirit from the mother's womb. They don't have the faintest idea what that's all about. Uh -huh. That's the kind of man we're talking about here. And it's a man that was born of a woman and a man. Jesus said he was, he was God's messenger. And he was a Nazarite. 100% of his life. Yeah. He wasn't any carpenter. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus was a carpenter. John the Baptist wasn't a carpenter. That's right. He was raised up in the desert. Till the time of his showing. Jesus said of John the Baptist, There is not risen, a, of those born of women, there is not risen a greater than John the Baptist. All right, now we're talking about Enoch. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. Not greater. Talk about Noah. Uh -huh. Not greater. Talk about Abraham. Mm -hmm. Not greater. Talk about David. Mm -hmm. Talk about Solomon. All the prophets. Yeah. There's not risen one greater than John the Baptist. Yeah. That's what he said. Amen. Whatever man may think about ordinary people, I have heard people say, God must have loved the ordinary people. There's so many of them. Well, it, we don't want to, don't talk like that. That's so simple. People begin to question if you got anything upstairs. Don't talk like that. People's always used extraordinary people. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Well, if you can find an ordinary person God used, you see if you can single them out. Wow. They were extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Not ordinary. This man named John, he was separate from the masses. And this has always been the way it is. The closer one is to God, the further he is from the masses. That's just the way it is. Doesn't mean he shuns the masses. John preached to the masses. Yeah, uh -huh. But he was separate from them. John the Baptist stands as a towering example of what God can do with a man. Uh -huh. Here's an example of what yeah. God can do with a man. He set before us as an object lesson of the kind of commission he can give to a man. You know this is the case, because he said, uh, among those born of women, one is not risen greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding, he that's least in the kingdom is greater than he. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, that's stymied a lot of people, but, but it shouldn't. Yeah. Shouldn't stymie you. Not greater means if you just stand eyeball to eyeball with John the Baptist, I mean, he dwarf you, I don't care who you are. Yeah. John was like a giant standing in a valley. You're like a midget standing on a mountain. It's where you are that makes a difference, not who you are. With John, it was who he was. See, quite a bit, quite a bit different, isn't it? The measure of greatness is not achievement, it's where you are. If you're seated with Christ in heavenly places, you know it. And you're like Paul, God shows you things he doesn't show other people. Mm -hmm. Unless it's through him. Mm -hmm. that, that's a great person. Yeah. In the kingdom of God. Not the person who had the most schooling. That's not, mm -hmm. that's not the greatest person. So I would submit to you that you don't have the faintest idea what God can do with someone that's submitted to him. Amen. Tell him without any qualifications, say, I'll live for you, I'll seek you, I'll work for you. It doesn't make any difference what it costs me. It doesn't make any difference where it takes me. Mm -hmm. You have no idea what God can do with you. Yeah. Amen. No limitations. We have John here, no formal training, yeah. as men count it. No religious prestige. Mm -hmm. His parents were aged, and they were of note only among those that worship God. They weren't of note to anybody else. Yeah, uh -huh. You know, some people, their, their parents are only known to the saints. Mm -hmm. But that's a pretty good recommendation. Yeah, okay. His father was a priest. He certainly hadn't gained the attention of politicians and businessmen and the likes. He was a priest. Found in the temple. John himself only lived to be 31 years old. It's not very old. Look what, <laughs> look what he accomplished. Yeah. Look how the scriptures speak about him. Yeah. 
years after he died, he still had disciples in Ephesus. In fact, it was at that point that Paul concluded the baptism of John. That, that was, that's the last mention we have of it. But that's how potent this man was. People from the other side of the world were disciples of John. His name's been etched into the stone of history, so anyone that's a Christian knows about John the Baptist. Even though his ministry was made obsolete, it was, it was uh, overshadowed by a greater ministry. The only way your ministry can come to an end is when it's overshadowed by a greater ministry. That's how these prophets were the same way. They were overshadowed by someone greater. Now the scripture says he was sent from God he wasn't planned by his parents. Mm -hmm. His parents didn't say things are pretty, things are pretty bad. I mean, if you noticed, Elizabeth, have you noticed how dull things are in a temple? Have you, have you noticed how people seem to have drifted away from God? I mean, why don't we ask God to help us have a child that can address this? He wasn't a planned child. Yeah, amen. In fact, his Parents couldn't have children. Mm -hmm. They didn't train him for his work. Mm -hmm. Aside from raising him in the, under the law, and he was knowledgeable of what Jew, all Jews were knowledgeable of, see. They, that was before they had nurseries and the like. See, they taught their children the things of God. Mm -hmm. This is the man who said, when Jesus began his ministry, John is the man who said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. See, his ministry prepared people for that statement. Yeah. Amen. His ministry got people ready mm -hmm. that when he said that, that meant something. Yeah. Amen. Before John the Baptist, that would have meant it. That, what would that have meant? Yeah. What would that have meant? The scripture talked about him putting, making an end of sin. And the Lord laying on him the iniquity of us all, but where was it said he would take away sin? Where was that said? Who would have known that? John the Baptist yeah, amen. made them aware of that truth. By the time Jesus came, which was six months after John commenced his ministry, He'd said enough that the people could recognize the Savior of the world. Yeah, amen. And when, as soon as he said that, some of his disciples, among whom were Peter and, mm -hmm. Peter and Andrew, James and John, they left him and followed, mm -hmm. followed Christ. His name was John. Later in this narrative, the scripture will tell us that Gabriel told him to name him John. John, this John, this John is mentioned 47 times in Matthew, 27 times in Mark, 58 times in Luke, and 42 times in John. How many times is your name mentioned? Well, that gives you an idea. Right there. In ministry will reveal things for which Jesus came, things he, he came to do. His yeah. ministry will reveal some of those. He is what, it, what we expect from a man that's sent from God. Yeah, God sends a man. We, we expect there yeah. to be some kind of unique and powerful message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How shall they preach except they be sent? Right. Mm -hmm. Not by the church. Mm -hmm. Sent by God. Yeah, yeah. A man sent by God has got something to say. Someone who doesn't have anything to say has not been sent by God. That's, yeah. that's how you can tell. The same, verse 6 says, the same came for a witness, mm -hmm. or to bear witness of the light, for that all men through him might believe. The same, that's saying this man named John. Yeah. That's the one I'm talking about, this man from John. John has its significance within the context of God's purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got you to see this. 
it's only in the context of divine purpose that people have significance. If they're outside the circumference of God's purpose, they're nobodies. Doesn't make any difference who they are, how much money they got, what they've achieved. If they're outside the circumference of the purpose of God, they are a zero. They're nobody. But if they're within it, they're somebody. John came for a witness. Now this is not a witness in the sense of seeing something. I witnessed it. It's not, that's not how this word is used here. This is someone who says something. He witnesses with his mouth, witnesses something. Jesus said to his disciples, ye shall be witnesses unto me. That is, I'm going to be the theme of your message. You're going to say things about me. Now, you've probably noticed that there's a lot of preachers and teachers that say hardly anything about Christ. Have you, or have you noticed this? Why is that so? Well, because you can't exploit the name of Jesus. You can't use Jesus' name and build a career on it. It won't work. Okay. He came to be a witness for, for Jesus, witness for him, to prepare the people to receive him. See, God does have something to say to men. He sends witnesses to say it, but he does have something to say to men, and they are obliged to hear it. Amen. They do not have the option now of ignoring it. Now, you know and I know that in our fair city, there's a lot of people who could care less about what God has to say. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. You see, that's logged in heaven. Whoever's not interested in what God has to say is going to face this fact yeah, right. on the day of judgment. God spoke and you didn't listen. God sent a message to you. It was a message, in this case, of salvation. You didn't hear it. And ignorance of God's word is not a minor offense, brethren. And this is something that prevails, particularly in the last few decades. The fact is that too often God's words are treated as though they were meaningless or novel or that's interesting or something like that. But John came for a witness and God intended that John be heard. Amen. To bear witness of the light. <clears throat> this is the one whose life was the light of men. Remember he said, the word mm -hmm. in him was life, yeah. uh -huh. and the life yep. was the light. Yeah, that's right. Amen. The life, his life, the life was the illuminating factor, yeah, amen. the light of men, mm -hmm. and that's the light John came to bear witness of. With the light was his life. Yeah, amen. Right? That was the, the light was his life. The, his life mm -hmm. was the light. That's right. So you have only as much light mm -hmm. as you are familiar with the ministry of Jesus, yeah, right. the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Only to that degree do you have light. His life mm -hmm. was the light of men. That's why the gospel writers went through and testified of his life. He went about doing good and hitting all that were oppressed to the devils. It was his life. But if you look at his life, it's just not a history. It's, it's, it's showing light. His life showed light. What God thought about sin, what God thought about having mercy, so forth. Yes, Brother Jason. When I read that in John 1, when I read the word life, it's it's not just biological life. Uh -huh. Boy. <laughs> it's like a it's a divine life. Yes. And that's why it's very careful to distinguish John from Jesus. Amen. Amen. John would talk draw attention to the light of which men were not aware. He came to bear witness to the light, which was the life of Christ. He had twelve years of age. 
that light that light was found in the temple answered and asking questions of the doctors of the law you're exposed to divine life that's that's divine life at 12 years of age that's what Amen. that's what it's like mm -hmm. if you're 12 years old mm -hmm. that's the pattern yeah, right. you got to be able to sit with the gray beards and profit from it yeah. that's the life that's the life of Jesus that's what it is yeah. if you got to go to the youth group that, that's not the life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in fact that isn't life I know that's kind of personal, but he was raised in Nazareth together with his half brothers and half sisters, but nobody knew who he was. They said, "He's a carpenter. We know we know who he is. He's the carpenter, mm -hmm. and he probably was an expert carpenter. I can't imagine him being anything else." But yeah. this isn't what God told. God didn't call him the carpenter. That's right. That's what men called him. He was the life. See, the life. The life wasn't a carpenter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, this, um, this was set up in Genesis. That's right. Whenever, whenever God said, In the day that ye eat thereof, ye shall surely die. Now, Adam continued to have a terrestrial existence, but he had died. He and mankind had died with That's him. That's right. Now the Jews would know this. Whenever he's, whenever the apostles are talking like this, he didn't have to tell a Jew that there was more than one kind of life, and that what God was addressing was a spiritual matter. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So John. He, he had to tell people before we leave that point that I don't think a lot of people understand what the Bible means when it says eternal life. Yes. It doesn't. It doesn't just mean a long time. Yeah. That's right. Or never ending. E eternal. The word eternal is not quantity. It's a quality. Quality. It's a, it's it's a certain type of life, mm -hmm. and it's not. It's not biological life. There's actually different words for it. Yes. Uh -huh. There's there. Bios is a word for life. But that's not the. That's not what we're talking about. It's, a, it's divine life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Divine life, and in this case, life is being able to respond to God. It's reciprocity. Mm -hmm. A fish is made to yeah, live in water. Uh -huh. yeah. Birds are made to live in the air. Mm -hmm. Moles are made to live under the earth. Man was made to live in God's presence. Amen. Yes. Being the light of men. Not that that light can shine, should shine. It does shine. Does shine. That's right. There's anything anybody can do about it. Amen. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. Amen. Just whether you got eyes to see it. That's right. But it's shining. There he was in Nazareth with his half brothers and sisters. But nobody knew who he was. He was known as Jesus of Nazareth. And over and over he's identified in Scripture that way. Jesus of Nazareth. See, over what John the Baptist did, he told you who Jesus of Nazareth was. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Uh -huh. Every, people didn't know who he was. They just thought he was the son of Mary and Joseph and a carpenter. And he had brothers and sisters. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. So he has to identify who the who he was. He was the light. Mm -hmm. The other gospels tell us that John came preaching, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand," yeah. and preaching the baptism of repentance. Mm -hmm. And telling the people to bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. Now it may be of interest for you to know that the word repent in any form is not found in the Gospel of John. Hmm? Repent, repentance, repenteth, repenting. The word repent is not found in the Gospel of John. Even though that is what John preached. Why not? Because John came to bear witness 
of the light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 So John's not saying he didn't say that. He's just uh -huh. he's saying that, but this was the core of his message wasn't repent. Mm -hmm. That was not the core. Mm -hmm. It was because of the core that he said repent. Yeah. Yeah. See? Uh -huh. But the core was testify, bearing witness of the light, telling people who this Jesus of Nazareth was. Uh -huh. When he saw Jesus, people knew who that was coming. Mm -hmm. He said, Behold the Lamb of God. They didn't know that. They didn't know that's who uh -huh. that was. Mm -hmm. I would go so far as to say I'm persuaded that a lot of people do, today do not know who Jesus of Nazareth was. Mm -hmm. They just have a cursory understanding of it. Yeah. All of this accents the necessity of focused and s focused and foundational preaching. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Today, I, I really don't like to emphasize this so much, but today we've got a church that does not know much about Jesus, and the reason it doesn't is because it hasn't heard much about Jesus. There's a different kind of preaching going on. Yeah, yeah. Amen. We need someone like a John the Baptist to rise yeah. up again and identify who Jesus is. People got the wrong idea about Jesus. Yeah. They think he's a do-gooder. Mm -hmm. Maybe he works for the Red Cross or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. That's how they think of Jesus. Yeah. Maybe he needs to be at Mayo Clinic. But that's not, they don't understand who Jesus is. Uh -huh. Now the church is the custodian of the truth. It's the pillar and ground of the truth. It's the church's job to make sure no society, no age is ignorant of Christ. Yeah. Amen. That's its job. When it drops the ball, truth falls in the street. Uh -huh. And it fails. Truth, the truth isn't going to get off the ground yeah. unless the church proclaims the truth about Jesus yeah. Christ. These are written, John said, these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. So that's that's what John's buttressing, see. Yeah. Why? Why is he? Doesn't everybody know that? No, everybody doesn't know this. That's right. I would venture to say you could not find ten Christians personally who know what Christ means yeah, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. I'll give it a try maybe I'm, I'd like only to be wrong but give it a try and you'll find out I think I'm not, I'm not wrong they don't know what Christ mm -hmm. and that's the first thing Peter confessed thou art the, the Christ Amen. the son of the living God he's the one God promised Amen. the great resolution Amen. to the right. sin problem he's yeah. the one He's the one. There isn't anybody else. There isn't any other plan. There isn't any institution. He's the one. Yeah. People want to be reconciled to God. Mm -hmm. They want to, quote, go to heaven. He's the one. Yeah. He's the Christ. Amen. Everybody else is a false, mm -hmm. false Christ. Amen. And then, this is quite an astounding word, that all men through him... That's John the Baptist, that all men through him, mm -hmm. through him might believe. Well, he's talking about all of Israel, you understand, because that's who Jesus was sent to. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jesus was sent to Israel. Yeah. Yeah. I give you some text there that says, unto you he was sent. Mm -hmm. He was sent to Israel. And the birth came through John the Baptist, so Israel would believe because of the message John the Baptist preached. In other words, John the Baptist put it together. Nobody could have concluded this by just reading the prophets. You could have studied them now till the second coming of Christ, and you'd have never figured out who Christ is. There wasn't enough said about it. But once someone preached Christ, yeah. now you get something out of those texts now, see? Amen. Yes. That all men through him might believe. Mm -hmm. And you first he was sent. It was necessary that the gospel first be preached to you. See, he was sent. Yeah. Yeah. 
How are they going to believe? Not by studying. <laughs> Faith comes by hearing, not reading. Amen. Amen. I know people say, go home and read your Bible. Just go home and read the Bible. It'll all come to you. Well, what if they go home and read the Bible and they think Leviticus is the book? Yeah, yeah. What, what do you tell them? Yeah. See, that's, that kind of advice sounds good but it's terrible yeah. Yeah. maybe they read the Song of Solomon and this is yeah. their favorite book now <laughs> huh? someone's got to tell them preach them someone who sees it has yeah. to preach it right. someone who knows it has to say it uh -huh. this is how God works yeah. that all men through him might believe he was a pair of Israel see John the Baptist wasn't sent to prepare Italy it existed. He wasn't here to Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. Macedonia. He, he wasn't sent to prepare that. It was to Israel that they might believe, because yeah. that's the key to everything else yeah. happening. Yeah. By divine appointment, the Jews could not come to Jesus independently of John the Baptist. Yeah. Uh -huh. That was divine appointment. He yeah. sent, there was a man. Yeah. Sent Amen. from God. Yeah. Now Paul told the Corinthians that everybody receives a minister from God. Mm -hmm. He said, who's Paul? Who's Apollos? Who's Cephas? Uh -huh. Ministers yeah. by whom you believe, mm -hmm. whom God has given to every man. Yeah. First Corinthians 3, 5. Yes, Brother Jason. You could say that Jesus was sent to Israel and then the gospel was preached to the nation. That's right. Mm -hmm. so we did, we, the rest of the world didn't get Christ in the flesh. That's he right. spent his whole life in one little place. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. they're, in, they're in what we call Palestine today. But the gospel to the was world. preached to the, nation. to the nation. And it's uh -huh. interesting that in the book of Acts, whenever almost every time the gospel was preached, it did. they did mention John. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, John had disciples at Ephesus. Yeah. It's an angel. We were, we were on the other side of the world. Now, John the Baptist, he, he came, he said, Repent, mm -hmm. for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a major shift that's about to happen. Uh -huh. Everything's about to change. Mm -hmm. And you get to get ready for it, you got to disconnect yeah. from your old life. Amen. You have to do it or you're not going to be able to plug in uh -huh. to this. Not at all. So I can repent the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus came preaching the same thing. Mm -hmm. Repent. You know, under the law, you had to get ready to confront God. When they are at Mount Sinai, Moses said, now tomorrow, mm -hmm. we're going to de be dealing with God tomorrow. So everybody wash your clothes now. Yeah. Get ready. Uh -huh. When the priest went about their priestly function, before they ever went to the altar, they had to wash. At the, they had to wash. Mm -hmm. They had to get clean. Before you, before you come, you had to be clean. Before you came, you had to wash. Mm -hmm. It's the same coming to Christ. You've got to clean up your act before you come. That's right, yeah. Until I can't do it. What do you mean you can't do it? You can't repent for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. That's not the way you're, you can't you can't approach it that way. You've got to say, brother, I am going to do this. Yeah, then like, you'll be able to pick up your bed and walk like the uh -huh. impotent <laughs> man. When you set out to do what God said to do, then and only then you get grace to do it. Amen. That's right. So John said to these old hard-nosed people that have been immersed in ignorance for hundreds of years. Uh -huh. He said, repent. Nobody said that for a long time. Nobody said that for a long time. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the message that had been, was being heard. Uh -huh. Repent. Get ready. Remember Amos told Israel, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Get ready. Jesus approached the second coming that way. Yeah. Get ready. I'm coming. Don't let me catch you unawares. Yeah. Don't let me come when you've not got your oil, your lamps went out and you don't have any oil. You don't want to. You don't want to be in that state. 
So John came to bear witness to the light, mm -hmm. point people to it, identify who Jesus of Nazareth was. But now John, very, very careful in yeah. saying this. He now he says now now he was not that light. Yeah. He he was not that. To him all believed, but he was not yeah. that light. Other versions say he himself mm -hmm. was not the light. That is the light that was the the life that was the light of men. Uh -huh. he, he wasn't that. Jesus said he was truly a burning and shining light. Yeah. He was a light, but yeah. not that light. Amen. <laughs> he was a burning and shining. See, he, he loomed out greater than yeah. other men, but he wasn't that. He wasn't that light. Yeah. Through him, men sh could believe, but through him, they could not be made alive. That's right. He, life was the issue. Right. Faith was, our believing was the means to life, but it wasn't life. Mm -hmm. See? So they could believe through John, but they couldn't live through John. Uh -huh. You can see kind of a parallel between this and the grapes and figs and pomegranates of Eshcol that they brought back when they went to search out the promised land. They got the first fruits, but they didn't get the source of it. John was a light, and through you were able to believe, but you didn't get the substance of it That's yet. Right. That's you had right. to wait until Jesus actually came to get the substance, just as Israel had to wait to get into the promised land to have the source of the things they brought back. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus said to these his listeners, he said, um, He was a burning and shining light, and you were willing for a season. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You were willing for a season uh -huh. to rejoice in his light. I mean, it was novel, it was different. I mean, he was popular for a while, but nobody cried when he was arrested by Herod and imprisoned and beheaded. There uh, wasn't any mass funeral. You were willing to rejoice in him for a season. I know people like that. Maybe you know people like that. They were willing, they were willing to rejoice in a secondary means of life for a season, you know. John was not intended to be a perpetual source of rejoicing. Uh -huh. Eventually, he, rejoicing in John had to be replaced by rejoicing in the Lord. See, eventually that, that transition had to be made. Admittedly, when you have someone through whom you believed, you rejoice and give thanks for it, but there comes a time when you've got to transfer that rejoicing yeah, to the Lord. Yeah. You can't keep it in the person by whom you believed. Yes. Jesus went on to say, after he said, you are willing to rejoice in him for a season, he said, but I have a greater witness than that of John. For the works my Father give me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father sent me. Of course, John, he didn't do any miracle. Mm -hmm. So we, we know from that he, was, he wasn't charismatic. Huh? I mean, would you have to come to that conclusion? Yeah. Yet there wasn't anyone born of a woman prior to him greater than him. Yeah, that's right. He did no miracle. Mm -hmm. Why not? Because that kind of proof mm -hmm. was reserved for Christ and those he sent. Yes, amen. Amen. It was right. different, see. Yeah. God didn't want people to become tied to John the Baptist. He was to bring them to Christ. That's right. mm -hmm. Yes. Who are you? Yeah, who are you? He says, he confessed them freely, I'm not. I'm that's not. right. He said, well, well then, who are you then? He says, I'm a voice. Yeah, I'm a right. voice. Amen. 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 So the light was introduced by a, a voice. voice. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See, Jesus came to take away sin. Yeah. Not to perpetuate repentance. Amen. Yeah, that's right. John came to re in inaugurate repentance. Uh -huh. But there come a time, see, the people today say, oh, this is where it's at. Yeah. This is where it's at. It's continually being in a state of repentance. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, this gospel is being preached. Oh, Believe yeah. me, I tell you this. Uh -huh. It's continual repentance. That's it. No, no, that's not it at all. Right. Repentance commences. It's not intended to be like an eternal process. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. The continual repentance presumes there's continual sin. Yeah. Which is not what Christ right. came to produce. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. We'll acknowledge that you won't live very long without having to repent. I mean, we, we 
There's no question about this. Yeah. We have, say we have no sin, we, we just have lied, we lied, we didn't tell the truth. Uh -huh. But that's not our manner. That's, that's not that's right. the manner in which we live. Now, God told us, he said, now, now put off the works of darkness. That's what you say to someone that's got light. See, put off the works of darkness. Mm -hmm. Put them off. Yeah. He was not that light. John the Baptist was not that light. So you couldn't get this done mm -hmm. satisfactorily because of John. You had to eventually, you had to mm -hmm. transfer your allegiance to Christ yeah. to put off the works of darkness. Mm -hmm. He was not that light. Now, admittedly, this is this is a difficult text to express. It may sound as though it's defining the purpose of John's ministry. And in a sense, this is true. But the fuller meaning is this is why John was born. See, he was not the light. He was sent to bear witness to the light. He's not talking specifically about John's ministry. He's talking about John being in the world. Uh -huh. yeah. John came into the world yeah. for this purpose. Yeah. Amen. See? Mm -hmm. it's, this is throughout Scripture. This, this idea is put forth. That someone is here because... They, they were, they're a person because of what God intends. That's why they're a person. So the, what you do is secondary. Mm -hmm. Who you are is primary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got to keep, that's always got to be kept in your mind. Who I am is primary. Mm -hmm. What I do is secondary. Mm -hmm. Why? Because what I do is determined by who I am. If you don't do anything, it's because you got no life. Mm -hmm. That's why. Yeah. If you do something valid, it's because you do have life. Yeah. So John came into the world. That's why he was here. Mm -hmm. Now, the same is true of us. Sometimes we were darkness. Mm -hmm. We talked about this before, that not only were we in darkness, we were darkness. Yeah, that's right. You were darkness, but yeah. now are ye light in the Lord. So there's been a, trans a transformation has happened in you. Yeah. You were once identified with the dark realm. You were darkness. Yeah. You emitted mm -hmm. darkness. Whenever anybody was around you, the things of God got dimmer. Yeah. Have you noticed this, that there are some people when you're around them, mm -hmm. it, the things of God... It's because they're darkness. That's why that is. They're dark. You're around someone that's walking in the light, things are kind of made clearer. So we were darkness. We admit this. We were darkness. Now we're light. As long, and as long as we're in the world, there's, there's, darkness is associated with us in a secondary sense. For instance, we have a treasure in earthen vessels. Yes. Earthen vessels, that on the, that's on the side of darkness, see? Mm -hmm. Fleshly lusts war against the soul. That, and it has to do with darkness. We're required to put off the old man. That has to do with, with darkness. There's another law in our members warring against the law of our minds. See, there's the element of darkness about us that we've got to have Christ's life, which is the light of men. Yes. We've, got, we've uh -huh. got to have that. Yes. If we don't, there's enough deficiency in us to pull us right back Amen. down into the quagmire of sin. Uh -huh. And then, God, see, God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. See, uh -huh. but that's not, that's not true of you. That's right. You're light, but there's some darkness in that body you got. Uh -huh. yes. There's some darkness. Amos told Israel. Now, at this point, I'm going to I'm going to establish that people exist because of God's purpose. Jesus said to Pilate, "To this end was I born." 
Right, that, that's coming into the world. To this end was I born. <coughs> and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. That's why I am. That's why I'm here. It wasn't any, this is what I'm going to do. This is why I'm here. Now God spoke in this manner to Pharaoh. For this in very deed, for this cause, have I raised thee up to show thee in thee my power. The reason why Pharaoh was in the world. See? It isn't because of what he did. This is why he was here. God put him here to be an exhibit of his power. Amen. That's right. How about that? Why yeah. existed? Yeah. Amos told Israel, I raised up some of your sons as prophets. That's, 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 that's why they were born. Yeah. Uh -huh. And some of your young men as Nazarites. I place some of your some of your people were born to be prophets mm -hmm. Hmm? and to be Nazarites, which are very devoted prophets. Mm -hmm. But the same re same point of reasoning, to he gave some to be apostles, mm -hmm. some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. It wasn't this is what he gave them to do. It's what he gave them to be. Yeah, That's amen. why they were in the world. Amen. See, Jesus was in the world to be a savior. Yeah. Yeah. So for the first 30 years, he was a carpenter. Uh -huh. But he wasn't born to be a carpenter. That's right. He was born to be a savior. Amen. And that, that's why he entered into this ministry. There's things you were born to do uh -huh. in God's kingdom. There are things you are intended to be. And at some point in your life, you've got to hit the point where you start doing them. Amen. Yeah. And hopefully you don't leave the world mm. prematurely. He came to bear witness. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness. That's why he was, um, that's why he was in the world. Mm -hmm. To bear witness. See this? Do you see how this counteracts being self-centered? Yeah. He wasn't here to do his own thing. Yeah. And I don't know how you fit free will and free moral agency and all that into that. Yeah. I can't fit it in there, but if you can fit it in, so be it. But there's a reason why you're here. Yeah. This is God's world. Yeah. It's God's purpose. Amen. You got God's life. Uh -huh. Under those conditions, why would the purpose be yours? So you've got to know what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, see? People had their own ideas about who Christ was. They did. He asked them, who do men say I am? Well, I said, some say, some say you're John the Baptist, who was dead. Some say you're Jeremiah, who was dead. Some say you're one of the prophets. See, there's nobody living they could liken them to. Nobody said, you're like, kind of like Gamaliel. You're, you're, they couldn't compare them to anybody that was living. Yeah. Yeah. You could only think of dead people that were unusual people. Yeah. Who do you say he is? See, Jesus would ask you that. He asked his disciples that. He said, yeah. well, who do you say I am? That's right. And God revealed to Peter, uh -huh. mm -hmm. you're the Christ, right. the Son, of the living God. He said, oh, Peter, you've been blessed. Amen. You've been blessed. Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. Yeah. This is not what they were saying in the synagogue schools. Uh -huh. God revealed this to you. Well, who do you say he is? Uh -huh. And uh, if you see the truth of who he is, God is the one that showed it to you. Amen. See? And eventually you'll find that somebody some person who knew Christ intersected with your life somewhere. God has used somebody whom God has given to every man. Yeah. Every man's got somebody that saw this thing that came, a path crossed with you, mm -hmm. and they said something about it, and it opened up, and then, but 
That's why you're here. That's why you're in the world. You're in the world to know God and to serve Him, give your body a living sacrifice to Him. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Teach that to your children. Raise them up and do on this. Don't, don't let them have to be 25, 30 years old before they find this out. Some of us didn't find this out until we were grown up people. Amen. Teach them this. This is why you're here. Amen. There isn't another reason for being here. Yeah. So, whatever you plan, whatever you purpose, you got to fit in. You got to fit in the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You got to fit it in there. If you can't see where it fits in, hold off till you can. I think I'll I think I'll close there. There's uh I'm sorry there's a lot more there than I was able to to give you, but I'm gonna think more on it. He was not the light. Yeah, that's right. But he came to bear wit but he did know who the light was. Yes, and he came to bear witness to the light. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Any of you have something you'd like to say more, Brother Judah? The main thing, the main topic that I gathered from just reading this text was God laying groundwork for a work that he was preparing to do. Mm. I've been considering um, creation, um, going through this with, in a science curriculum with Silas and Aaliyah this year, so I'm, we've been thinking about that a lot. And on, on the second day of creation the uh, firmament or the atmosphere which gives us breathable air and water were made and I, I wrote an article in considering what traits of God we can see in his creation that and that that second day I, I thought about that God laid the groundwork for something he was going to do later mm -hmm. because the firmament gives men breathable air and the water is what fish thrive in and if you want to bring it full circle, then men eat fish a lot of the time and thus wouldn't be sustained through eating if God hadn't have made the water and the atmosphere because it sustained life. But he did it beforehand. He prepared the work first. That's we right. can see the same thing That's in this right. text. God does nothing on a whim. Nothing he does is impulsive. He does everything in accordance to his purpose, which was laid before time even began. So for, for men to think that God has a plan B because something went wrong is basically a wrong idea. And that, that's, at, that's at its core. There might be some ignorant, ign ignorance in there too. But when God works, it's very deliberate. And there's no plan B. There's no oops mm -hmm. with God. When, right. he, when he works, he does it in accordance to his purpose, which was laid before time began. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, Brother Justin. Yeah, uh, you were talking about when you were, when we were darkness. Uh, sometimes you get around these people and you're, you're, everything seems to go a little bit fuzzy. Well, I've noticed the opposite takes place a whole lot of times, where you'll be in the room and you'll see people modifying their behavior. Just because right. you're in the room, no, that's they're, right. They'll watch what they say. You can tell they're trying to watch what they say. Oh, more. Yeah. You're not, you're not giving them a look. You're not <laughs> judging them. You're not. You're just there. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> yeah, with the bill. You know, I was thinking about John actually giving his life, you know, mm -hmm. up for the cause of Christ, because that's what he did. He yes. Really uh huh. But you know what he was doing there was pointing out the righteousness of God, the unrighteousness of man. And the reason why he's beheaded is because that man feared the righteousness of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think sometimes Amen. that's a good example for us to be bold to speak of the righteousness of God. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else tonight? All right, we'll close. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this text. We thank you for John the Baptist. Yes. We regret any time we spend like in a lack of appreciation of this great prophet. Amen. We give him honor now to whom honor is due. Uh -huh. We thank you that he performed his work well. And we pray that it may be said of us that we performed our work as well. Uh -huh. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.